Hey guys, Akiba here from Crypto Slate again. Uh, today with me, uh, we have the founder of Waves, uh, Sasha Ivanov. How are you doing, Sasha? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for having me, Lion. No, no, thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, so, do you just want to do a little bit of an intro to yourself? And the question that I always like ask pretty much everyone I speak to is, what does waves mean to you so obviously i don't ask them about waves but what does it what does the project mean to you so i don't want the kind of what's the elevator pitch um what would you say to investors what do you say like but personally what does the project mean to you yeah so basically i am a waves founder with like a long blockchain like og chain was launched in 2016 pretty old chain one of the oldest uh, i was in like active in blockchain space since probably around 2014 Launching some projects before waves, uh, exchanges, uh, some like crypto funds, table coins as well, actually. And in 2016, I thought that it would make sense to launch a blockchain that would be like really accessible to regular people. And also, uh, I think a year uh, prior to that, Ethereum was launching and it was like pretty sophisticated, like uh, the, the image. Uh, it was probably too sophisticated itself but the image was like very sophisticated mm -hmm. so yeah. i thought it would make sense to create something more accessible uh, and that was the idea and actually we stick to the same idea ever since uh, or uh, the model was a blockchain for the people basically remained the same so we're trying to create something like very accessible because i think it's very important for mass adoption so probably mm -hmm. uh, waste is a, like the best chain uh, in terms of like token uh, issuance, it's very easy to, to issue a token on Waves. It takes you like uh, a couple of clicks to do that. So it's very mm -hmm. simple. And now we have like a full ecosystem where we can uh, launch your token. You can create your uh, exchange pool. You can uh, verify there's some like, community verification process. Um, and you can even like do some milk farming um, automatically. So there's, there can be some other incentives for uh users to add liquidity to their pool so it's like a uh, complete token platform it's all in one place and um, it's very easy to use uh it's very cheap transaction costs like around one cent and less um yes so take a look actually because i think that we have probably the best solution um currently maybe not so popular but like, it might change and for me waves is exactly this uh, i'm trying blockchain is something that you encounter only once in your lifetime, you know, so it's those like paradigm shifts, they happen not so often. So before blockchain didn't have working decentralized technologies. This is like the first attempt to create a decentralized uh, mechanism for actual uh, like systems, you know, so before blockchain, we have only, we have had only like centralized systems, like <laughs> throughout uh, the history of humanity. So those paradigm shifts don't happen very often. Mm -hmm. And for me, blockchain is something that I really like to do. And uh, I think it's not about like money and making profits. Uh, it has to be sustainable, but that's about it. I'm focusing on the actual technology uh, because this is what I like to do. So this is something that I really like, uh, not as a business, but as just something, just as something that I do in my life. Yeah. So, you, so you you really believe in blockchain technology, like personally, like it is just a passion to you, is it? Yeah. So I believe in decentralization. So it might be something different. You know, we could have some other technologies uh, beyond blockchain. Blockchain might like you know, be phased out, like sometime in the future. You know, we can come up with better solutions. Uh, so it's about decentralization. It's about like. Uh, more uh, like harmonious uh, systems of like social interaction. And I think uh, blockchain is like the first step in that direction. So let, given, given the, sort of the, the passion that you're talking about there, let's start with um, probably, I imagine was one of the most difficult uh, things for you to sort of manage on that was the kind of the, the loss of peg for, for USDN. Um, what, was that, what was that like for you personally when you, you, you saw the, the, um, the coin start to depeg? What was it like watching it kind of fall and what happened kind of behind the scenes from your point of view? 
Yeah, yeah. So um, there was like a lot of market manipulation uh, during the spring, not only with waves and our Fibo coin, but everybody knows about Luna. So we had something yeah, similar, yeah. like on a smaller scale, of course, but it was similar to Luna situation. And uh, our Fibo coin neutrino, USDM, uh, is built differently from Luna. So it's, it has no connection to Luna. Uh, so it was impossible to depack it, you know, to, to make it uh, this file. And people probably did not realize that. They thought it was uh, something very similar to Luna. Uh, we did have a couple like weak spots in, uh, in stablecoin setup, uh, but it was still impossible to uh, depack it completely. Yeah, so I mean, so, like, the, the lowest you yeah. hit was mm -hmm. like point eight was it point seven six or something and it seemed yeah, to yeah, yeah. recover mm -hmm. twice so obviously it happened prior to luna and then around the same time as luna um for those that believe that it was market manipulation that caused the collapse of luna i mean there was a, a couple of hundred million that was dumped on curve over the weekend and i mean i'm in the the, the camp that does feel like <laughs> Not everything adds up, at least. Do you think, is, is it possible that USDM was kind of a bit of a test case by whoever was involved? Do you think it would maybe the same people? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think, I think I, actually they were more or less the same people or there was some overlap because I don't think it was one group, actually. Uh, but it's like, yeah, I, I'm not going you know, like, to discuss any conspiracy theories so, because I'm not really interested at all. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and basically, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty easy to depack any stable coins, even uh, USDT, uh, and they try to depack USDT as well. Basically, you manipulate curve pools, you man manipulate liquidity, you just can withdraw liquidity from uh, curve pool, and that leads uh, to some like uh, depack, and it has to be like rebalanced by arbitrage. But in our case, it didn't happen fast enough. So. Uh, because it, it actually it, it wasn't supposed to be really fast, uh, so I didn't um, actually worry so much about that because I knew that the pack would be restored through arbitrage. But arbitrage is, is kind of like slow, mm -hmm. so it takes it takes days actually to rebound that because otherwise we would have had the same situation that Luna had if uh, like our uh, arbitrage could act like too fast. Uh, probably uh, the spiral uh, situation uh, like could be like more more probable. So you have to limit arbitrage. So it takes time to rebalance it, and in several days it just returns to back. So I think it's kind of okay for our algorithmic stable coins. I'm not saying that it's like it's perfect. Of course, we have to make sure that these situations, these situations are really like impossible in future. Uh, but you always can manipulate market liquidity, so you can always attack the pack, and um, you need to come up with some mechanics to restore the pack because it can be broken because through just like dumping the coin uh, mm -hmm. into the order book, you know. So you can't do nothing; you can't do anything about it. So, so I mean, you have to. Yeah, 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 yeah please, please. Mm -hmm. I was say so. Like currently, like it's kind of. For the last couple of months really now, it's been sitting around kind of 98, maybe 99 cents. Is that where you now expect it to just stabilize and stay? Or should, in your view, it be getting closer to, to $1 over time? Because I know you've got a few different mechanics in place, haven't you, to restore the, the peg? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically why is it like now $1 now? Because there's some cell pressure. So we have like some other you know, issues in the basic system. For example, uh, there was a uh, lending protocol, um, which is called Rears. And there is a situation when um, when the market crashed and there, there was like a lot of death, death accumulated in Rears. Uh, and uh, now like I like personally assumed um, all the bad debt and I like uh, liquidated it. Uh, it's like it's half uh, decentralized, half centralized. So basically, community can uh, actually get a union for them to liquidate. Uh, and part of it, like centralized, we are selling some union as well. So, uh, but we do it in such a way that union uh, is not the defect, at least too much. 
So there's some, right. there's so the some cell pressure. pressure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the cell pressure is you basically at the moment, then, isn't it? Because it was like five, yes. yeah, five hundred million dollars. I think you took on yourself. I mean, what was that like? Like, okay, <laughs> I've got half a billion dollars of debt now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was not like it wasn't fun. I must say, you know. So, but <laughs> I didn't see any other options because people were like speculating who was like who had the debt, like who. Who, who were like the culprits and I think it was like a, a good decision to uh, basically end all rumors you know I just said guys okay so let me just handle the situation I'm responsible because I'm like I'm res responsible for the whole ecosystem so in a way I'm responsible for everything that happens within it so let me solve this so I like personally assume that that and uh i have no doubt that we will resolve the situation and everything will be back to normal and it's kind of back to normal already uh because uh, there is like a lot of activity new projects are launching in waves uh but it's still something that we have to deal with probably it will take us maybe a couple more months to resolve it but it's okay it's, it's like you know so you have to go through this sometimes because i think it's a good like learning experience and uh, you understand that uh probably uh we have like some other situation in crypto now when we have like new players with like a lot of funds a lot of resources so we have to probably work on more robust uh architectures you know so and and what does not kill us uh, makes us stronger you know so it's just gonna it's gonna be useful for us eventually so w with all that in place um obviously there's still been you said about the controversy and the such there's there's still been people that call have called waves uh, a ponzi how does that make you feel mm -hmm. given that you've taken on half a billion dollars worth of debt yes, but you know so you can you should differentiate between like paid fun and like general uh, genuine uh uh misunderstanding you know because uh, there was a lot of paid fun and like yeah it's it was very obvious you know you can see those bots i can see bots on twitter like not like if i can see i can tell you whether it's a bot or not because <laughs> i i was looking at a lot of twitter accounts and it's pretty easy to see they they, they actually get in better you know before uh you had like worse bots but now we have a very uh, good bots uh, that you can't really uh, like, uh, they're like the same as like uh, normal users you know so when you, you look at the certain twitter account you, you can be like 100 percent sure whether it's a real person or not but uh yes yeah, so it was like paid fun people try to make money short in ways and uh, you know, that led to you know, the md pack what can you do you know so you basically you have to understand that like crypto is mostly about money now you know so it's kind of like reduced to monetary applications now only and you have to deal with it so uh, if we have better chains with more scalability maybe there's going to be some place for non-monetary applications you know people will start doing like some kind of like DAOs, charity DAOs will try to implement DAOs in the real world but now we don't have that much capacity and bandwidth in blockchains and it is all uh, uh, basically uh, used up for uh, DeFi, you know, so basically for making money. So it's kind of not good, but what can you do? So basically what we can do is to basically work on scalability and then we will attract more people, maybe not so focused on making money uh, right here, right now, and maybe like with long-term vision, you know, so, but this is what it is. So, one of the areas, obviously, um, you sort of talking at, at DeFi. Um, Akala also recently had a major issue with like one point two eight billion dollars being kind of minted uh, erroneously. Um, what are your thoughts on on how that played out and their suggested solution? Um, given that you appear to have successfully defended a peg in a world where <laughs> others have failed yeah basically i think you know so it's uh, way too easy to make money in DeFi now and yeah it attracts developers who just uh don't want to like bother with like uh audit of their code and like thinking about how it will 
play out in the long run. So we would have a lot of problems like that, you know. So maybe it will cool down a little later, but now we have what we have. And Luna actually has been like working for several years, but all those uh, holes, yeah, all those errors in the architecture were quite obvious. I didn't look into Luna until it collapsed, but that was like pretty obvious because they didn't have any uh, uh like fail safe mechanism you know so you yeah really well, wasn't there even it, yeah, it was yeah. yeah wasn't mm -hmm. there even there was a limit on the amount of luna that could be converted into um the the stable coin in a day um from what i i could see in the contract which surely had a major issue like I, I never really understood why that was part of their 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 system like it seemed like they were set up to fail by sort of yeah. methodology within the contracts yeah it was very strange so i don't think it was some kind of malicious intent i don't really think so oh, i don't think that, that. Uh, but it was just an uh, just a blunder just an error and also people and like you know they don't think about any negative consequences when you have a bull around people and uh yeah. looking to make as much money as possible and, and there they had so many like huge crypto funds in luna and, and uh they have uh, like analysts they basically have analysts that could just you know take a, a closer look at the architecture and how they didn't so this is what is really crazy you know? so, because yeah, yeah, there's like, like the high level people in all those crypto funds but there's some analysts like who are supposed to actually uh, research the project, the funds invest in, you know, and how it like went past them. I don't know. It's kind of I can't explain it. This is what is really strange. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. one of the things that I, I'd like to ask about, because for me, the biggest. I wouldn't say it's actually the biggest. One of the major um, fallouts of what happened with Terror initially with USDN is the sort of the sentiment away from algorithmic stable coins. Like I accept that it's by no means perfect, but after everything that's just happened with Tornado Cash and the sanctions and USDC blacklisting addresses, TRM Labs now supplying an API to DeFi to tell you which addresses can and can't interact. Like that's not that's not a DeFi world that I want. Like I feel like there's a stronger need than ever for decentralized stable coins. Do you think we can get the market sentiment back towards them? Yeah, it's gonna take a while for sure because it was a pretty bad situation. I think I'm in crypto um, for like ten years by now. You know? So, but I've never seen anything bad uh, like that. You know, so it was really bad because he, why it was so bad because he had some like new players and they and basically uh played uh, and they played in the market you know so yeah it's pretty bad actually so it's gonna take a while you know and i don't think the market will change um, in general we will have a bull run cycle again i'm not so sure if it's good because he, he, we need to understand that all those like crypto winters and crypto summers uh are in a way a result of some kind of manipulation they're not natural i would say you know so you have the like they're not caused by the uh progress of the technology itself you know so <laughs> there's no connection between uh the level of like blockchain tech and uh, the current crypto season whether it's mm. summer or winter yeah. well, do, do you not so feel like that just sorry on on that like the the DeFi summer in in 2020 like that i think the the rise of DeFi surely had an impact in the last bull run and, and kickstarting it i mean i i, I completely un agree actually that the speculation from there obviously takes us to the all-time highs but do you not think that DeFi summer was the impetus for it and that wasn't revolutionary in technology mm, no i don't really think so i don't like the current DeFi setup in general because uh, it can't work without instantization. Um, it basically started with a Uniswap and like liquidity pools. Um, they wouldn't be so big without uh, instantization, like external instantization, because you have uh, you, you have impermanent clause. So when you just add liquidity to uh, swap pools, like very simple swap pools, uh, the way you have in Uniswap, you must probably lose money. You know, so you have to pay people for their 
how they all treat it. It has to be yield farming. So you, you, you farm this kind of like baked in uh, into DeFi, you know, so you can't do it out because if it's just liquidity, you have to in permanent loss and uh, chances are pretty high that you just like lose money or at least you're like, you're not making money. So you need to have those incentives and those incentives are very like, um are there are ponzi like you know because and it's, it's a temptation temptation to create you know, a ponzi mechanics and attract users through uh the ponzi like mechanics are very high you know so this is a problem with current DeFi. so it's not really sustainable without incentivization external incentivization or ponzi like mechanisms so i don't think it's it's good you know so DeFi is great but the current setup and approach uh maybe good at the beginning but there has to be like the next step of DeFi development when we have uh some other mechanism you know that will provide for long-term like sustainability because you can't build on top of like ponzi like structures um, it's not gonna last you know so we need to come up with other ways to like accumulate liquidity in one place and uh, because for example when people receive I, I remember like when there was the bull run, people were like receiving like 40, 60, 100% APY, like consistently, you know, but it's like, it's impossible because yeah. it has no relation to real world economy, but people thought that it was something like natural, you know, when you try to come up with some project that paid like 10%, you know, they said, no, it's like, what is it, 10%, come on, man. So we're not going to go there, so we're not going to invest in this, please stay away, we're investing in something that pays us 100%, like, consistently. But it's like, it's some kind of fallacy, it can't last, you know, so 10% uh, APY is, like, great, is great, you know, so if you, if you get paid 10%, like I said, because you don't get that in your back, for sure, you know, they mm-hmm. might they actually take money from you, not pay you money, you know uh for uh, for keeping uh, your funds with them so 10 percent apy if defi is like consistently able to provide it and i think it can because it's a revolution it's a financial revolution really you know because it allows you to um, circumvent like the middleman and like yeah. borrow and lend money without like any kind of like intermediaries uh so 10 percent profit per year is like is good you now so if this is what it actually should pay you so if we are able to consistently pay 10 percent for like several years yeah and if i can become an alternative to traditional banking and uh, or but if we have so many like positive like projects probably people will be too scared actually you know? so it's a very thin line and we uh, really don't have to cross it so I don't want to keep you much longer, but it's a really fascinating um, hearing your sort of views on DeFi and how we can kind of solve it. Um, I'd just like to get your take on where we're currently at around decentralization. Obviously, I mentioned briefly uh, Tornado Cash um, and DeFi protocols now yeah, sanctioning yeah. addresses. Do you think that we're in a kind of watershed moment for DeFi or are you not as worried? Um, it's kind of strange. Yeah, I think uh, we will have some... I'm not sure that the market is going to change drastically, but they will try to come up with some some other like directions. So we're launching like a new type of doll now, uh, basically, uh, in which when uh, when you make wrong decisions, you you get slashed basically. Uh, sorry, 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 uh so uh uh actually so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to look into different directions uh and i think uh we, uh, if we can come up with something available maybe uh you know, and some other guys will come up with something like interesting uh we can change the market at the moment i'm not so sure about it but well at least this is what we should be working on as for the situation i think it's crazy it's it's a very bad mistake for regulators because uh, you had all those C5 products, projects that actually um, that is like a slap um, on the wrist, you know, so nobody is going to go to jail, I think, uh, in all those uh, 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 centralized DeFi uh, protocols. I, I won't be like uh, 
or any names, but uh, everybody knows about those pro products. And you have uh, developers that basically just work on the code and they're not, they're not like they're not trying to hide. And you know, so it's very strange why you should arrest them, you know, because they were not the beneficiaries, obviously. Uh, and they did have some token, right? because I think it was even on Binance, uh, but they were not the beneficiary of all those like transactions. Uh, they were wrong in a way because they were like, you know, too optimistic about the consequences and they didn't see any like danger. Maybe they were too young and too stupid, but you know, it, this is something different. So they were then on criminals and this is very obvious. So uh, it's a bad mistake. I hope it will be rectified, otherwise it will have a very bad impact on the developers and crypto development because people will be scared, you know, now. Or they will uh, become anonymous and this is also not so good, you know, because... I, sorry, sorry. Uh, if they will become anonymous, I mean, that's also not so good because... Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it will actually make uh, the market even harder to control for regulators. So they should rethink their position on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on a lot of that, um, 100%. So, um, well, thank you very much for joining us. What's what's the, what's the what's next for us to look out for to do with Waves? Obviously, you're sort of saying that maybe like a few a few months until the selling pressure um, is kind of removed due to you kind of helping restore the peg. Um, what, what can we expect next in terms of the community um, and sort of the ecosystem in general? Yeah, so basically we're going to be launching, uh, I think at the end of the year, uh, the new version of the protocol, Waves uh, to Zero or New Waves, uh, uh, as, I, as I like to call it. Uh, and before that, we'll be launching the, the new DAO, uh, and it's not going to be a DAO focusing exclusively on the East. I hope this is going to be like a new approach to DAOs in general, um, because I think this is what can really change the market. Uh, maybe even be like useful in the real world uh, scenarios. This is what I, I would like to be like personally focused on because I think the dolls are the next big thing. Uh, not even DeFi, but dolls. Because if we can, not us, maybe somebody else can create a doll with like hundreds of like billions of dollars in it, you know, it can start competing with like real world structures as like states, mm -hmm. governments, corporations, you know, and this is, this is, this can be really, really big. And I think this is what crypto is about, not about like borrowing lending and trade fight. It's about creating new uh, social structures and improving the old ones. But fantastic. Um, I look forward to to seeing more about that. Um, I think you're completely right in terms of a DAO. It's just a mechanism by which we can kind of create like decentralized lobbying, activism, like making change. I think there's a lot can be done. We've seen some potential use cases um, for that with kind of um, Constitution DAO and, and the, the such okay. um, and some of the experiments. So excited to see uh, where that goes. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Sasha. I'll let you get about your day and finally pick up that phone call. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's stay in touch. Yeah, so, so. yeah, yeah so so thank you. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching to the end. It really means a lot. Um, if you're interested in watching more content like this, subscribe to the channel. Um, it doesn't cost a penny. Um, if you could like the video, it really helps it get out there in terms of the algorithm. I know everyone says that, but it is true, unfortunately. Um, and leave comments below about sort of what content you'd like to see next, who else you'd like us to interview. Um, we've got a massive Rolex of people. We're trying to find really interesting projects and getting a, a different angle uh, for you guys to, to get some insight into the industry. Um, you can like us on follow us on on twitter um so at crypto slate or myself i'm a keeper blade uh and obviously the website where the majority of our content is is cryptoslate.com so go there now we have a membership um which is called edge where you can get insights data um exclusive articles some really great stuff um and there is some cool stuff coming up with edge for edge members uh in the not too distant future so uh check it out and until next time have a great day.